Hey everybody, Brett Etheridge here, founder of Dominate the GMAT, and I just have a quick freebie for you, a solution to one of the more challenging questions from the official guide, the GMAT official guide. It's a question my students ask me a lot. I am actually literally in the throes of recording hundreds of videos. I've decided to record a solution video for every single question in this latest edition of the official guide because uh, kind of a hidden secret, right? I mean, I'm not kind of revealing anything that you don't already know. The book's answer explanations are not very good. They're way too academic. They're not always the best way of solving questions. And so I assign these questions to my students in my course and they're always asking me, hey, is there a better way to do this? And, and so I just decided to literally give you the best solution to every single one of them coming soon, but here is an example of one of the videos that I'm in the process of, of working on, and I think you'll see that it's so much more helpful. Now, for the purposes of copyright, right, I can't reproduce the question, so you'll be able to deduce and figure out what the question is by watching this video, but hopefully you already have the GMAT official guide. If not, I've posted a link to it kind of below this video. You should definitely get a copy of it. It's an invaluable resource uh, for preparing for the GMAT, but whether you have it or not, if you have it, definitely in the title of the video, you see the question and the page number, and so you flip there and you can follow along. If not, you can just try to do your best to deduce what's going on in the question. I know you'll learn something as well, and I think the key takeaway is, are there uh, kind of better ways, less formulaic, less traditional, kind of boring ways of solving the questions to still get a right answer? I think you'll see that the answer is yes. So enjoy this solution to a challenging question from the GMAT official guide. Here we have a ratio question, and remember, what's the key to ratios? That relationships do not equal quantities. So they've given us the relationship between shirts, dresses, and jackets. What are the actual quantities? Because we're asked for the total number, to convert ratios to quantities, we can just essentially multiply it by x, right? These ratios can be scaled up proportionally. So we have 9x actual shirts, 4x actual dresses, 5x actual jackets for a total of 18 parts, right? So the actual answer to the question is, how many do we have total? We have 18x total. So really to answer the question, we just need x. The question really is, what is x? What is the multiplier effect? And another key thing to remember is because we're dealing with things like jackets and dresses, we're dealing with integers. You can't have a half of a jacket or something. So we are dealing with integers. So for example, when it says that there are more than seven dresses, well, how many dresses are there? There's four x dresses. And if that's greater than seven, we know the actual number of dresses has to be a multiple of four. So there could be eight dresses, that's greater than seven. There could be you know, 12 dresses and so forth. So that's another thing to keep in mind as we look at the statements. So statement number one says, shirts plus jackets is less than 30. So shirts is nine x plus jackets is five x and that's less than 30. Now at first glance, it might look like that's not gonna be enough information, right? It's an inequality. Nine plus five is 14x, so 14x is less than 30. So really, what does that mean about x, right? We can answer the question if we know x, and there's more than one possible value of x, right? For 14x to be less than 30, x could equal one, because one times four, that could be 14, you know, actual shirts plus jackets. Or there could be x equals two, because if x equals two, then there are 28 total shirts plus jackets, which is still less than 30. So we don't really know. Uh, but we did have this extra information that says dresses has to be more than seven. So if the multiplier is only one, dresses is only gonna be four, that's not more than seven. So x can't equal one, so there's only one possible multiplier there could be. x equals two, and therefore we can solve for the total. 18 x, 18 times two. So statement number one is sufficient by itself. And by the same logic, statement number two is sufficient. And actually this one's even more straightforward because we don't have an inequality. We're told that shirts plus dresses, right? Shirts plus dresses. Uh, yep, equals 26. So this is a flat out equation. So you know, 13 x equals 26. So yes, we can flat out find x, which is all we need to answer the question, which is why statement number two is also sufficient, which is why the answer is D. All right, I hope you found that helpful. I hope it cleared up any confusion you may have had about that particular question. If you want solutions to 
all of the other questions in the GMAT official guide, head over to dominatethegmat.com. Check out one of our courses. As I said, these are now included with the courses, certain packages. But for now, I'll leave you with that. I am getting back to recording hundreds of more videos so that I can bring them to you and empower you to dominate the GMAT.